this brown bag lunch, this staycation, this do-it-yourself oil change, this second shift at work. At American Family Insurance, we understand what it takes to make your first home a reality. It's the same as it takes to protect it. For home, auto, life, and business, visit amfam.com to learn more. Insure carefully. Dream fearlessly. American Family Insurance. American Family Mutual Insurance Company, SI, and its operating company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin. Is there a new cause for concern with Le'Veon Bell? Could Russell Wilson be a giant soon? And we take a closer look at how the running backs finished in 2018. Plus, a five-time league winner in the 2018 Football Guys Players Championship, Billy Metcalf hangs out with us tonight to talk Browns running backs, 2019 rookies, and more. We've got a great show for you. Dave Gerzak is here. I'm Eric Balkman. Stick around. Your high-stakes fantasy football hour starts now. Put your hands, everybody, if you got what it takes. Because I'll tell your reps and I'm on the mic. Broadcast live and heard around the world, you are now listening to the most entertaining hour of radio on the planet. It's the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour presented by MyFFPC.com with your hosts, Eric Balkman and Dave Gerzak. The High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour is your home for football analysis from the best fantasy players in the world. And now, because no one else was available, here are Eric Balkman and Dave Gerzak. With the master rhymer, the leaf behind a video You know, the top rhymer. Salutations, all of you balkaholics and Gerzakinatics. Welcome to the latest episode of the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour. Presented by MyFFPC.com, I'm your slightly above average host, Eric Balkman, and my co-host is the patron saint of fantasy football, the Dizzle, Dave Gerzak. Coming up on tonight's show, does Carrion Johnson deserve to be going earlier in FFPC drafts? And Billy Metcalf, a winner of five Football Guys Players Championship titles last season alone, drops in to talk strategy for the 2019 FFPC drafts, as well as the ADP for a lot of players, and much more. Shout out to the chat room right now. Feel free to post any questions you guys might have in there if you want to connect with us on Twitter. The show is at HSFFR. I am at Eric Balkman. Dave is at David Gerzak. Billy is at Fantasy Enquirer. And you can post on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash HSFFR as well. 347-426-3682 is the number. If you want to give us a call, uh, hang out with us tonight. 347-GAME-OVA. High stakes fantasy football at gmail.com is the email inbox that our producer, mutual friend Rob, and our audio engineer Bryce will be checking. Uh, we'll get to all the chat room questions, all your tweets, all your emails in the uh, fantasy feedback segment coming up later on in the show. Now we are going through how the running backs finished in 2018. So I don't know how many we'll get to, but we'll do our best, as we always do. A uh, reminder that if you are looking for some Dynasty Orphans uh, to take over at pretty good prices, you can do that uh, at myffpc.com. Check out the list there. I know Dave said before the show started, we're getting down there. There's not a ton left available. Uh, but the prices are still excelente, as the kids would say. So you can uh, get a good deal on there and form uh, a new Dynasty. And you never know. Uh, these things can turn around pretty quickly. Best ball, super flex, and double ups are available at myffpc.com starting at $35. As a reminder, we do have live drafts going every night when they do fill. Uh, we also have plenty of slow drafts going on as well. So no excuse. If you want to draft, there's something there for you. And the big announcement, I guess we, you know, we've kind of teased it on this show, Dave, but the big announcement we had this week, FFPC main event, 2,400 team cap this year, a $500,000 grand prize. Hey, that's a half million. That's a record-setting grand prize, the largest ever in season-long fantasy sports. Is that true? Like two hundred thousand. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Actually, so let's see. Wait, what was the one um, that Stan Mithios ran? They had a million-dollar grand prize. Stanima. Stanima, yeah. yeah. That was uh, so they had a million. No, that was FFOC had a million, right? Yeah, it was it FFOC? FFOC was a million. All right, so I guess I'm lying. Yeah. It's not the big. Well, they're gone though. So they are gone. Now the biggest. Now. Yeah, yeah. Well, the biggest whatever. since you know 2010. Since F. Fuck. <laughs> Uh, so as it were. So that's uh, that's very cool. Uh, so check that out. 
Uh, sign up right now. 42. Is it 42 main event times? No, it's more than that this year. It's like 50 or 60, I think. I don't know if it's that many. I think 42 sounds like I think it's 200. It might be 200 traffic. Too many. Main events are starting, I think, uh, Sunday, right? Uh, something like that. Alton and Brothers, they started on like August 27th. Yeah, they start earlier this year, so we'll have uh, plenty of action in, uh, in on that. Uh, let's uh, bring in tonight's guest. Uh, last season, he launched FantasyEnquirer.com, where he writes articles, posts rankings, a site that he attributes to a lot of his success l- uh, last year from doing it. Uh, he and his dad actually picked up 12 Football Guys Players Championship teams uh, and went to the Las Vegas Planet Hollywood FFPC uh, main event draft and uh, drafted a team out there of the 12 FPCs. Seven of them made the playoffs, Dave, and five won championship titles. They actually went five for five in those title games. That's nuts. And his best team actually only had one loss, and Jarek McKinnon was his second round pick there. He did have two teams finish in the top 150 in the championship round as well. You can follow him on Twitter, as we all do, at Fantasy Enquirer. Please welcome into the show tonight, Mr. Billy Metcalf. Billy, thanks for hanging out with us tonight, man. Hey, what's up, boys? Thanks for the warm welcome. Well, you bet. And and listen, this is not the first time that you're talking to the Dizzle, as you had briefed me before. You actually had a conversation with him uh, out at Planet Hollywood prior to your draft about uh, one Mr. Christian McCaffrey. Is that right? I did. I did. I walked up and uh, actually met Alex first, and uh, he introduced me to Dave. I actually went up and probably the first person to ever come up to Dave and call him the patron saint. And uh, he looked oh, yeah. at me and kind of smirked, and he just goes, oh, that bulky, that nickname. And <laughs> it, was a, it was hilarious. And then from there on, we had a Christian McCaffrey love fest for about five minutes. And uh, <laughs> we were actually – when you go out to play in Hollywood to draft in the main event, they have boards if you draft the next day. And uh, we were kind of counting all the boards, about 20, 25 boards. And none of them had Christian McCaffrey going after the, I think I had the eighth pick. I think maybe only one or two maybe had him going before that. And uh, I was all ready to pull the trigger at eight, but he went five the day I was drafted on Friday. Five. Yeah, wow. yeah, it's crazy. That's And I'll tell you what, it was worth it. a five-minute conversation, <laughs> a five-minute conversation love fest with Dave Gerzak about Christian McCaffrey is the shortest love fest conversation you can have with McCaffrey. Yeah, I do all day long uh, yeah, about no, it. That, it's, it's, they usually last a lot longer than that. Uh, and, and I believe that they will continue on uh, again this year. You had quite the, you know, we're, we're going to talk a lot about your football guys teams. Your main event team was actually really, really good this year. And, you know, it, it stinks because one of the pitfalls is um, you, you had made a target. You had targeted Patrick Mahomes in the 10th round, but in the 8th round you're like, oh, my gosh, Deshaun Watson's still out there. This, we, this, the smart play is to pick him up now. Otherwise, that team really could have been dominant. Yeah, no, uh, there's something I kind of wrote about in one of my articles this year in my uh, 2018 little closing chapter, Year in Review on Fantasy Inquirer. That we talked about sometimes you have to be saved from yourself, you know. It's like too good, you know, something happens that's so good that you just can't pass it up. But when you already have, you know, everything planned out, you just, you know, luck needs to break that way. And, you know, we had Mahomes in the chamber, and I'm sitting there in the sixth, seventh, eighth round. I'm like, you know, Watson's still here. Should we do this? You know, and we did it, and, you know, I don't regret it because he, he didn't do that bad. But, I mean, obviously, there's no Patrick Mahomes, you know. But uh, Yeah, no, that's just, true. It, it could have been I, – I, I look at that, too, as, like, if, you know, if Will Fuller would have been healthy the entire season, I mean, Watson might have – he, he might have been a monster down the stretch. I mean, you never – number, number five player overall last year. Watson was? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's very, very good. Uh, that was an excellent choice for you in the eighth round. And, and, you know, I feel like, you know, we're already 10 minutes into the interview. We haven't really gotten to it. Besides, uh, Billy, besides FantasyInquirer.com, besides uh, Crush from the Football Guys Players Championship, can you tell the listeners what you do for a living? Yeah, I'm in the healthcare industry. I work for a regional blood center um, in my area. I'm actually a jump, skip, and a hop down south from you guys in the Quad Cities down here right off the Mississippi River. And uh, we nice. deliver platelets and blood and stuff around the country, and we also deliver stuff locally uh, to hospitals within about 150-mile uh, radius. Uh, man, this winter, I, this, uh, my last ice storm took about two years off my life last week around here. <laughs> it's absolutely ridiculous, uh, and, and uh, it, you know, I, I'm not one to complain about the cold, and I feel like I haven't been complaining about it a whole lot, 
this year, but man, some days it's getting pretty difficult, Dave. Well, you know, by the way, I, I appreciate the work you do, and I always like to brag to Valky about how I, when I I go to give blood, I do the double red cells. I'm an O negative, so I'm a universal donor. So I, you know, I love saving lives. What does Valky. that mean, double red cells? <laughs> it's, a, it's, like a, it's a double donation. It's like you, you can take they, up. They give you the stuff. option. Yeah, you don't you don't go as often, but they do. It, 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 I don't know. Well, I'm hey, this isn't my yeah. They make twice it. And, yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Interesting. And the nice thing is, after you give it, and then you, if you drink that night, oh, dude, you just three drinks, and you're loaded. It's great. Yeah. It's amazing, right? Yeah. Well, you shouldn't do that, though, right? Oh, yeah. You're hammered for the whole day. And, yeah. <laughs> anyway, you only need about one IPA, you know? I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would probably do it, yeah. <laughs> anyway, back to football. Uh, so five titles, five football guys titles out of 12 teams. That's amazing. A 5-0 and in title games. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what you felt made 2018 so successful as a whole for you? Um, well, let me tell you a story. It didn't always go that good. There was, uh, like, three years ago, we did three teams in the FFPC, football guys. All three of them made it to the playoffs. I went 0 for 3 in the first round, you know. Ah. And <laughs> yeah, didn't win a cent, you know. So we were just in That's the dumps. Funny. Yeah, so yeah. – um, Actually, I, I lived in Iowa, and we moved to Illinois. Me and my girlfriend got a house here. Uh, you know, cue the joke about somebody actually moving to Illinois. And, um, <laughs> uh, you know, we can play fantasy here because I, you know, have to use my buddies and stuff. Iowa's a banned state. And when I moved to Illinois, I got with my dad. He's like, let's just, you know, let's go all in, you know. Let's get a bunch of teams, you know, football guys. Let's do main event team and – that's how we got rolling. And then right about that time, this time last year, I started Fantasy Inquirer, and I started doing my own rankings, do my own reviews, got on Twitter, started hooking <laughs> up and, you know, exchanging information with people. That's great. And got it rolling. Did you – Yeah. Billy, Billy, did you feel like um, in more concentrating on um, the, the, the five title teams in the FPC, did you feel you had a lot of the similar players uh, on those teams, or did you diversify quite a bit? Uh, how, how did how did that work out for you with you know in drafting twelve teams and having half of them um, or nearly half of them win their win their league? Uh, I did have a little bit of diversity in the back end, but um, one thing I tried to make sure of was tight ends. I tried to take two in the first uh, ten rounds for sure. Um, like I'd get Earth. For Kelsey, I had them on probably two or three. And then on the back end, I'd get Howard, Kittle, or Ebron. Um, I also loved Burton and Rudolph, which, I mean, didn't really go that good. But I always would come back with a Howard or an Ebron or a Kittle after that usually. Or a Jared Cook, you know, a bonus in the 15th round. But my goal was to walk out with three tight ends usually um, this year. I mean, that's sound strategy, Dave. I, I feel like, you know, I've played in – this is, you know, awful that I'm saying this. I've played in one tight end premium league in my <laughs> life. And I, I think that was a similar strategy. I, I tried to get kind of – I think it was like two tight ends in the first seven rounds. But I, after the 11th, I wanted to make sure I had three of them on my team. And it actually worked out pretty good uh, for me that year, uh, the one year I played it. Um, but I think – and I think if you talk to a lot of FFPC players, they'll probably say that that's, that's – a lot of them will say they attack the position that way. Now, there's going to be plenty of them that say, ah, you don't need a tight end. Tight ends are overvalued. And then there's other people that say, ah, you need all of them that you can get. You know, double flex. I can play three of them every week. What, you know, whatever. I think that the happy medium is somewhere in the middle there. So that is very interesting. Another interesting thing, Billy, about you, and we're talking Billy Metcalf, five football guys players championship league titles to his name last year alone. You make your own rankings. You make your own projections. Um, this is something that I – would never do because one, I don't have the patience for it. Two, I don't have the time for it. Uh, I'm curious as to how you build those. How do you, you know, how, how does one formulate uh, rankings? Because obviously whatever you did last year worked out really, really well for you, my friend. Um, I don't have any uh, silver bullet. Like I know uh, someone lost front of me, Bob Lung, you know, he has consistency. That's his bread and butter. I pretty much look at, uh, I start out looking at the consensus at uh, fantasy pros kind of, and uh, I actually write an article every week, an up-downs article. I kind of look at, you know, who's stupid high and say I'd go a lot lower or vice versa. And um, I kind of look at that first. It's kind of my template. And then, you know, like last year I saw Mahomes is going in the, you know, he's a 16th pick or whatever. 
well, I want him as the eighth pick, you know. So that was how I started formulating it. James White, you know, same thing, you know. I saw Michelle got hurt, and I'm like, okay, someone has him as the 34th rank. I'm going to bring him down to the 18th rank because, you know, I've seen four, you know, I've seen two or three Super Bowls of James White. I know he's pretty good when, you know, he gets a chance. And, uh, you know, that's pretty much how I formulate him. It makes sense. I mean, I, I think that's that's the way to do it, where you're building off somebody else's base and then you tweak it to, you know, basically how you think that they're going to end up. Um, it's it's the way to do it, and honestly, without you know overloading your 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 brain and your spreadsheets and everything like that. If I had to do it, I think that's how I would do it, Dave. Yes, sir. It makes a lot of sense, yeah. actually. Yeah. So this next question is about drafting live at Planet Hollywood for the first time last year and, and that whole experience. So we want to know what the biggest surprise, the biggest takeaway you had. And you know, if you you can you know you can be you have to talk about maybe the blackjack tables, the twenty five dollar limits to start and you know on Friday nights weren't so good or the ladies of the night sitting over at the bar, you know, they weren't as good looking as you were hoping. Or the fellas of the night. Yeah, whatever. Whatever you want to talk about, you know, <laughs> give us give us give us some feedback on that experience. Um, you know, you're gonna it's gonna sound like you guys paid me to talk about this, but it's, <laughs> you know, you, if you guys haven't been out there, you know, the old cliche, you gotta go. Okay. No, seriously. I, this was, I was last year in the same place. I heard people talking about it. You know, I got my, my dad. We took a chance. We went out there, and um, it was one of the best times of our lives, going out there and, you know, meet Dave and Balky. Balky had a uh, John Bolton ambassador uh, like whiskey mustache last year, so I didn't recognize you. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah absolutely. <laughs> you had that going <laughs> And, uh, yeah, they don't let me. Yeah, uh, they don't let me at the hotel unless I have that mustache on. So it's, yeah. it's a prerequisite for, for throwing that I out every year. I looked back. I was like, I was like, I saw that guy. But uh, no, <laughs> seriously, it's 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 the best. You know, the best players in the world. And when I mean it, I mean I sat down and I had everything. I James White in the eighth round. He got pulled. He went in the sixth round. I had uh, <laughs> you know I wanted Juju in the you know fifth. You know I, all my rankings. You know, I heard a guy talking about it a couple weeks ago. If you want somebody out there at the main event, you have to go two or three rounds before you really want him, and that's the honest truth. You know, and it's and David, it, you you know, you, we sit through these big paybacks and these varsities. I think it's even more exaggerated when it gets to that. I mean, it's it gets to be the tenth round. Well, and, so, yeah, go ahead. I, I, you get to be the tenth round in those leagues, and I'm seeing guys drafted and normally drafting like the seventeenth round of main events. Or the twentieth rounds in football guys, you know, well, it's crazy. And by the end of the weekend, you have yeah. the high society league. A lot, like half of those guys that are playing for ten grand have already drafted with each other in like five or six other. Yeah, leagues. that's the other. So, aspect. Then, so then they're like, you know, it's like, okay, uh, are you taking Kareem Hunt here at the twelfth pick? Yeah, so I just like I did in the other seven leagues. You right. Know, so that's, yep. You see that <laughs> happening a lot too. Yeah. No, it's totally true. It, it's it's totally true, and 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 I think you make a lot of sense there as far as I mean that's always my biggest takeaway. I you know from looking up those drafts every single year, it just gets crazier and crazier as the week goes on. Billy, let me ask you one one more quick question about that. So did you guys uh, did you go to the Thursday party? Question number one and question number two is did you stay through Sunday and Monday, or when did you, when did you guys fly back? Um, I did. Yeah, that's when I met you was the Thursday party. Um, Thursday party. And, uh, right. That was when the. That was with the delay game. Remember the uh, Eagles Falcons game got delayed for fifty years and um, right. <laughs> the, the, that awesome. was an awesome. You guys had you guys had an awesome spread there. The buffet there is amazing. Got kind of a funny story. Uh, I think we were talking to some people out in the lobby. And the game was about to start and we walked in and we saw the food spread and it was kind of a circle table and we looked and we're like, dang, we're late. This must be you know all gone. So we walk up to it. And uh, all of a sudden, I don't know if you've seen Walking Dead, we were just like in the middle of a sea of people all of a sudden behind us rushing the <laughs> food thing. We were the first people there. They are all just waiting for someone to come up, and that you know, was crazy. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was try great. It. Yeah, that was Well, so awesome. you thought you were the last ones, but you were actually the first ones there. That's crazy. We were actually the first ones there, yeah. And it was like right. a zombie apocalypse around us. We're like, holy cow. Like, I mean, people were ready to eat, and it was really funny. Billy, let me ask you. Uh, let me ask you this: You, you, you obviously you you have your own content site, obviously, but I know you check out other sites, um, and I know you're listening to other fantasy football podcasts. Now, it's it's pretty rare. I mean, we're we're sort of I wouldn't say we're the unicorn because there's other podcasts that are specifically di- dedicated to high stakes fantasy football, but mo- the majority, by and large, do not. Yeah, they do not Ooh. cater. I don't want to talk about it on the air. I'll t- talk to you about it off. <laughs> you're the not best. important. 
<laughs> well, thank you. We we appreciate no. that. Yes. No, if there may or may not be one, I'm serious. Anyway, so we um. Said, all right, Dave, come on. This, this is why I didn't, want, I didn't want to. Suck. I didn't want to bring this up on the right, air. Serious XM does not suck. We will move on with this question here. Um, you, you listen so to everyone who works there. Bill, is it, Sid, why would you do that? Like just. Flame on on every possible bridge right now. Um, so you listen to a lot of podcasts. You check out a lot of content sites. Now, the, by and large, the, the wide majority do not cater to the high-stakes owner. Um, what do you think, as far as these quote-unquote expert uh, content sites and, and podcasts, what do they continue to get wrong when, when it comes to you know playing with, against some of the best players in the world when it comes to fantasy football? Um, I think some of the things they get wrong is they try to push running backs like crazy. I mean, you know, I'm not talking about all the experts and stuff, but um, I kind of did an article about this last year, uh, you know, writing about how the year before when running backs went, like uh, DeMarco Murray went in the second round, Ajay went in the third round, Kroll went in the fourth round. This was in 17, and I kind of buffered off that to make a formula for this year um, with guys I figured out like Collins, Ajay, and Drake this year. Um, who all those guys were pushing in the top, you know, two to three rounds, you know, fourth round. And um, I just, I I subscribe to a theory you don't have to get these guys just because they're guaranteed touches out the gate doesn't mean they're going to get touches week six through, you know, 14. And, you know, that's kind of my beef with a lot of the experts. I think um, it's interesting that you bring those three guys up because I know you wrote wrote an article uh, for fantasyinquire.com regarding those three guys this year. And I remember, and Dave, I don't know if I ever told you this, um, but we were, you know, we broadcast these pros versus Joe's drafts uh, in July. And I remember specifically of, of the players that were getting pushed up, those three, I remember, especially Alex Collins going super, super early. And I was th- and, and it was never like really a Joe that was, that was taking them. It right. was usually these pros that were taking them. I'm like, God, the pros are really on these heavy volume accumulator backs with not a lot of talent. Yeah, non pedigree. Non pedigree backs, you know. Types. And and a lot yep. of the Joes were going they were going after the talent. And not necessarily at running back, but they were bypassing those running backs for receivers or, or a tight end, uh, as it were. And it, and it's and it's so interesting too, like we were emailing that like, oh yeah, I wrote this article, like the, these three guys right here were guys I was all fading um for that season and I was like, you know what? None of the pros seem to be doing that in pros versus Joe. These guys are all thinking Zach Stacy after his one good season. Well, you know, I, I, this guy's a piece of crap. It, 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 yeah, I mean, it was crushing it in the AAF right now. Well, you know, that's the difference. Until they run out of money. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I do um, – I, I remember Howard Bender, I think, was from Fantasy Alarm, was one of the first, dra- like, drafters for, for pros versus Joe's. And I remember him – he took Alex Collins fairly early, like the third round, like the middle of the third round. I'm like – Damn, it seems kind of early for Alex Collins, and I didn't think anything of it. But then it seemed like it, that's where he was going in all the pros versus Joe's drafts. It was one of those things where it just it kept ha- uh, happening uh, over and over and o- over again. Um, now, two guys, well, one guy that went super early last year, uh, and another guy that we thought was going to go really early this year, are now teammates in Cleveland, Dave. Yeah, Kareem Hunt, and we want to know what you think his signing will do to Nick Chubb's valuation. And uh, you know, just his overall stats for Chubb. What do you think Hunt's going to do to it? And Billy, before you answer that, I can tell cool. you. I'll just, I'll just give you the. Uh, and before you answer his next question, I have another comment. Okay, um, I'm just going <laughs> to just give you the information right now. Right now, in FFPC drafts, Kareem Hunt is going on average at the 6-12 pick. So he is apparently a six-round pick right now. Nick Chubb still going in the mid-second at the 205. So you can talk about those guys. And then do you want to get yeah. in your comment? Okay, the okay, follow-up question after you tell us about Nick Chubb's uh, signing and all that stuff the Cream Hunt signing, is we want to know how many games do you think Cream Hunt will be suspended for? Oh, yeah. Have a That's another we question, yeah. Go. Yep. So, go ahead with your answer. But then the more important answer is how long is the suspension? <laughs> um, well, I'll answer, you know, I, I'll answer the last question first, I guess, because that makes me answer the first question, you know. Uh, right. I, 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 I actually, as a weekly listener, to you to oh, no. find highly skilled uh, <laughs> broadcast professionals. I know that uh, one of you guys thinks eight games. So I heard that actually, and uh, right away I was like, you know, I don't want to litigate this right now, but that that <laughs> kick or whatever didn't look like much. I showed it to my girlfriend right after. Yeah. Time, she's like, what? She's like, what? She's like, you've done that to me, honey. <laughs> oh, for God. All right. Jeez. Yeah. So, yeah, but, you know, okay. 
I think it was, you know, I'd say I, I, I thought four games, three or four games. But I'm hearing, right. you know, eight games to a season from other people. So, I mean, right. we just – we don't have this information right now. But my but my first instinct when the signing first happened was it wouldn't hurt Chubb that much. And uh, I, I also think Duke Johnson will probably get moved, honestly. I, I think that's the plan, bringing in Hunt. You know, they kind of want in, you know um, Chubb to be the Ingram, you know, and maybe Hunt to be the Camara. That was my first thought when that signing happened. So – I mean, maybe down the line when he comes back, he'll start to cut into Chubb's workload. But I think Duke Johnson gets traded. I mean, that's that's just what I think will happen with all this. But, of course, we need to see how many games he gets suspended first. Right, yeah. No, you're totally right. And, and, and Duke Johnson being moved, I think, is best for his fantasy value because he is just – I mean, he wasn't on a team with Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb last year. It was just Chubb, basically. <laughs> And he still couldn't get enough touches. So he needs to be moved to another organization that's going to uh, use him much more than Cleveland is. I am totally with you on that. Talking with Billy Metcalf, you can follow him on Twitter at Fantasy Inquirer. Check out his website, fantasyinquirer.com. Won five football guys leagues last year, and he is joining us on the HSFFO or tonight. Uh, Eric Balkman, Dave Gerzak, talking with him. And uh, let's switch to Dynasty here. I know. Dave, uh, Dave and I were talking before the show. He sent out a flurry of trades, actually made a, a, a dynasty <laughs> trade. Uh, uh, today, was it, Dave, that you made the dynasty trade? Yeah. Consummated it? Yeah, my overpay, I think. Well, you, well, Billy, you play dynasty. Let's, let's, let's ask him what, what he thinks about this. Uh, Dave is a massive DJ Moore fan, was a massive DJ Moore fan even before. Yeah, the highest speed on score of all time. Right. I mean, in the pre-draft process, you liked him, uh, <laughs> even before Carolina took him. And you traded... Uh, the 101 this year for DJ Moore and a 2020 second rounder. Is yeah, that correct? Correct, yeah. So uh, what do you think of that deal, uh, Billy? Uh, DJ Moore for the 101 and the 2020 second. Well, I think if he likes him that much, I think it's worth it, honestly. I, I think that he's probably definitely going to be the number one. I mean, is Cam for sure coming back and you're going to be slinging the rock there? I think that's the question that we have to ask. I think he was. I'm not too concerned. Is supposedly going on. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I mean, I was concerned about a month or so ago, but everything I've read since then, I, I feel warm and fuzzy about it for sure. So, <laughs> this is so a 27 I'm not too... Andrew, Andrew Luck situation, is it? Where, you know, we're all fine, we're all fine, then training camp comes and he's not throwing, and then all of a sudden he misses the year. That's what I'm worried about. Yeah. You know, it would be great. Would be great if it was the 2018 Andrew Luck situation, where yeah, where yeah. Luck really <laughs> skeptical and then just crushes it. He you proved, know? Luck proved me wrong. He came back and did really well. You know the great. Me too. I didn't have him at all. Yeah, me either. Here's the great thing about this: you own Christian McCaffrey in a lot of leagues, right, Dave? Yeah, I'm, uh, suddenly I feel like I'm a part. I should like buy one percent of the Panthers or something. Right, because you own DJ Moore in or one one thousand six six of eight leagues right now. You own him in. Yeah. Um, so McCaffrey, I own him in four or five. Okay. okay. So my my point is to you right now is that if if Cam can't come back, uh, or if he's a shell of his former self. Either his his backup or Cam will only be able to throw it to Christian McCaffrey. Right. So either way, you win. Yeah. Exactly. You know, you you sort of hedged your dynasty here. I just want as long as, as, long as the defense is average to poor, I'm happy with Carolina. Right. Yeah. So Carolina go heavy in the NFL draft on defense, <laughs> or excuse me, on offense. Uh, special teams. Mostly. Special teams would be great. great. Yeah. Offensive yeah. line, special teams. Well, my whole point, Billy, in, in in talking to you about this, I'm just curious if you, if you've begun any rookie research for your uh, dynasty drafts yet, and are there any players that, that are sort of standing out to you that you think the buzz is actually going to grow on as we get closer to the NFL draft? Maybe guys that are expected to be big hits at the combine, guys you have your eye on. Basically, I'm, I'm giving you the floor here. Any rookies you want to talk about here, we'd love to get your insight. Um, Bryce Love, obviously, from Stanford. I don't understand why, he's, why he dropped so much. I see him going in like the mid-second round of uh, rookie drafts uh, right now. But uh, I don't have any deep sleepers as of yet. I really haven't looked that far. But uh, I, I love Hakeem Butler out of Iowa State. Um, I see he's probably like four or fifth wide receiver. I, I have him as one right now, just kind of spitballing. Um, he's six foot six. He's a huge target, and he has really wow. deceptive speed. I mean, I don't know if you guys ever watched any film of him or watched him play, but uh, I definitely I like him more than. Yeah, D.K. Metcalf and uh, Harris on that team on uh, Ole Miss. Right. But, uh, I haven't really – yeah. yeah. Um, 
the Butler, yeah, just just like you said, six foot six, two twenty five. He is a junior, so he's foregoing his senior season uh, and going into the NFL. Last year for Iowa State, sixty catches, thirteen hundred and eighteen yards, and nine touchdowns. So wow. obviously that was big time, especially when he's coming off of twenty seventeen, forty one catches for fewer than seven hundred yards and seven touchdowns. I think this guy is going to be very very good. This is Dave. This is a good wide receiver class. This is actually a really good wide receiver class. What I'm hearing. And and the running backs maybe not so much. So if you need, uh, I think. I think a couple will emerge. They always. Oh, they, yeah. I mean, I like the guy from Kentucky. Uh, the guy from Memphis. I don't know names yet. Uh, I, 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 I Daryl Henderson, Henderson from Texas Memphis. Data. Yeah, that's the guy. Yes, I like him. Yeah. Uh, I watched William uh, recently. Uh, I watched his YouTube. He looks really athletic. Catches and, uh, passes too. Yeah, smaller guy. Smaller guy. That's that's fine. What do you, listen, what do you think? Of the whole NFL Metcalf? is about speed. Okay. Metcalf, he, now, he, let's he, talk he, about he, DK Metcalf. Not yeah. related. He, not related. <laughs> Yeah, I was. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were all. No, I look, I look more like off-season Le'Veon Bell right now than DK Metcalf. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, that's we listen. We all do for sure. DK Metcalf, Dave, looked like a man in that picture, and I think AJ Brown just tweeted out another picture. Yeah, that was a he and AJ. Yeah, that, AJ. He's actually in really good shape too. Yeah. AJ Brown is totally mean. And he's another guy who can go in the first round of the draft. Um, he's very productive. He um, so Metcalf. Um, I, I, I should have brought this article up, but there was some article, I think, on Rotoviz. Oh, you know who was? It was Anthony Amico, my old Scott Fishbowl buddy, put out something, uh, a list I mean, of – name drops involved. Can get I know. Uh, it's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> he, he put out a list of um, – I can't remember the gist of it, and I, I'll have to put this on the Twitter uh, or something later when I find it, but it was a list of um, players that break out um, – Damn it. Now I can't remember what it was. All I know is it was a list of all crappy receivers in oh, DK yeah. Metcalf. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? What was it? Yeah, it was, was their, it their David comparison. Yeah, it wasn't. No, the dominator rating, if, if their dominator rating wasn't over 0.28 at a certain point in their career, they, that their hit, chances of hit, their hit rate was 1%. What, less than 1%. Yes. And, and and Metcalf fell under that, which is why I think he's so going to be a little bit overvalued. Riley Ridley was another one that fell under Yep, that. yep, from Georgia. Absolutely. Okay. So uh, we'll have to get that out on, on Twitter and, and post that. But DK so Metcalf. retweet him Nico's tweet. Well, yeah, I have to find the tweet, though. <laughs> that's, right. that's the thing. Um, DK Metcalf is a guy, and, you know, Listen, uh, fellas, if, if feel free to disagree with me. I feel like he's going to go higher in rookie drafts than I am comfortable taking him, especially with all these other receivers out there. Go ahead. No, you're completely right. I mean, I, I've been seeing the, the – uh, I was looking on Twitter. Someone was talking about David Boston. They're like, oh, he's going to be David Boston. And someone else was like, well, David Boston had a great – you know, he had a 1,000-yard year, and, you know, he was great for a little bit. But, uh, yeah, I, I'd rather have – Butler for sure, uh, Kelvin Harmon from NC State for sure, and uh, yeah. Enteo Harry from Arizona State. I think he's the chalk to be the number one uh, rookie wide receiver, but I, I'd rather take Akeem Butler from Iowa State personally. Uh, yeah, yeah I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that's, uh, that's crazy at all, I, and I think there's probably a lot of people out there that would agree with you. Nikhil Harry, I think, is talented. He's another guy that I, I might have some issues with. i got to flesh these out. Pretty, yeah, watch think, the combine. Yeah, that's, my, that's my whole thing. Is like, I, yeah. I, like Once I see the combine, I can start you know, formulating better opinions. Once, yeah, once Metcalf guys. jumps 11 feet 2 inches and 41 <laughs> in the vertical, so everybody's like, oh, my God. Yeah, DK, DK Metcalf <laughs> running a sub 3 five forty. Yeah, right. It's going to be insane. When, when that actually <laughs> <laughs> you see Usain Bolt ran like a four two two. Yeah, and, and he was in like sneakers and sweats, like well, he was, I mean, he was just dogging it. Yeah, I mean, it just he didn't even care. It's like, oh man, what we do? Uh, let's get to a couple of emails that came in for you, Billy. Uh, first one's Rick in North Augusta, South Carolina. Hey, Billy, did Tariq Cohen scrape the surface of what he can be last year, or did we see his ceiling in 2018? Thanks, man. That's Rick in North Augusta, South Carolina. Thank you so much for the email, Rick. Your thoughts on Tariq Cohen? What did we see last year? Is is, is he just beginning to break out, or did he sort of limit out uh, of, of what we ex- can expect to see over the course of his career, Billy? Um, I think he kind of just scratched the surface. He was on a lot of my teams this year, not just because I'm a Bears fan, but because I knew with Matt Nagy coming in, um, you know, that system would change and he'd get more passes. Uh, he had 53 last year, and uh, I think he had 73 this year. And I, I think that he can – I think that he could probably get to 90, honestly. I mean, 
I think that the Bears, I, I, I don't know what they're going to do with Howard next year. I, I think they might keep him. I know they were supposed to get Kareem Hunt, but that never happened, obviously. But uh, I, I would definitely, I, I don't know if, if he's going in the fourth or fifth round. Like, I've seen some of these mocks where he's going. I don't know if I'd take him. But, I mean, if he's still going to slide to the sixth or seventh round, you know, take him all day. Currently going at the 409 in FFPC drafts right now. It's probably out of both your and my price range right now, Billy. Uh, but he's certainly an interesting guy to uh, to take a look at. You know, the thing is, if, if, if Jordan Howard is released, um, that that's going to make Cohen's uh, ADP spike. But if they, then if they do sign somebody or if they draft somebody, uh, especially if they draft somebody on day one or day two, that is going to make Cohen's value go down. So he is a guy that we will be paying attention to over the next couple of months for sure. Let's go to John in McKenzie, Alabama. What's up, Fantasy Inquirer? How do you see Jarvis Landry's 2019 going, and is he a value in drafts right now? That is John in McKenzie, Alabama. I can tell you, John and Billy, that uh, currently Jarvis Landry going at the 507 in drafts right now. He is going behind the likes of Robert Woods, Kenny Galladay, Julian Edelman, and Cooper Cup, but he is going ahead of Allen Robinson, Alshon Jeffrey, Doug Baldwin, and Tyler Boyd. So your thoughts on uh, the season that is ahead for Mr. Jarvis Landry in Cleveland? I think he's going to have a great season in Cleveland. I think that offense as a, as a whole is just going to explode this year, honestly. And we were, we were talking about Chubb and Hunt earlier. I mean, I don't know if it would be such a stretch to have them maybe even leapfrog and, you know, Kamara and Ingram down there in New Orleans, honestly. I'm I'm that high on him this year. Uh, Najoku, I mean, everybody on that offense, I think, with Mayfield is just going to do great. And, I mean, the fifth round, I, I expect Jarvis Landry's ADP in September to probably be in the third round. I mean, it's just middle of the third round. I'll put, I, I could put five, put five on it right now, but that's where it's going to end up. I mean, I'm we, we don't sure. bet with people that we're interviewing. We yeah. have, we have no, before. No, no, yes, no. we have. We, we should. Have. Oh, well, that's that's another. Take money from customers. Jarvis I mean, Landry is the type of guy. Like, like he, didn't his <laughs> ADP go up last year after Hard Knocks? Like we were watching Hard Knocks and yeah, he was making all like, those insane plays and, and, and terrible speeches. Yeah, well, the speeches I wasn't. Insane speeches <laughs> and terrible plays. All I remember is so him. Was he was lighting awesome up. Place. He was lighting up Denzel Ward in practice, and you know he catches his thirty yard uh, pass and be like, "We gotta bless him. We bless him after the play like that or whatever." You know, he was all about blessing Denzel Ward and and, and what have you. So that's what I remember about Jarvis Landry last year. Now, he went through that little bit of lull, but when Mayfield took over, man, and Freddie Kitchens especially, it was the Nick Chubb show, and, and Jarvis Landry certainly took advantage of that. And David Njoku, to a certain point. I guess what I'm trying to say is I like Baker Mayfield this season with all that talent around him. Sounds like we all do. There you go. It's, uh, it's like it's all, right. all right. So, Billy, so we're going to talk about, just real quick, we're going to go into uh, the sleepers and creepers as our – Friend of FF Mastermind. Would say. I was just going to say, is that Nazareth? That's Mike Nazareth. Yeah, that's what I thought. Sorry, the, the <laughs> sleepers Mike, and creepers. And he, he might email me and say, you know, you just can't use the sleepers and creepers. Yeah, in the air, like. players to pick and flick. That's another <laughs> one. Yeah. All right, so we're looking at a player you'll be staying away from the early rounds next season, as well as a sleeper that is poised to break out in 2019. No Browns, please. Okay, no Browns. I am going to go with my first guy to stay away from, Aaron Jones. Um, mm-hmm. I know Matt. I know Matt Lafleur is uh, up there now, and I was a big Derrick Henry guy last year, um, and he kind of really put a wrench in my, uh, you know, Henry shares for about eighty-five percent of the season uh, by splitting <laughs> with Deion Lewis. So I, I, you know, I don't trust him really, and I don't, I, I don't trust Jones. You know, he gets banged up. I, I, you know, I don't think he missed time last year, but I know he did the year before. And uh, it's just I, – I see he's going in, what, the beginning of the fourth, late third. Uh, there will always be somebody that will jump up and want him more than me, at least. I know that. Fair enough. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, Aaron Jones currently going at the 310 in drafts as, uh, you know, a, a guy who follows the Packers fairly closely up here. Uh, that is too high. It is too high to take Aaron Jones in drafts. There's still Jamal Williams – who I know the Packers like, and I'm convinced that they're going to take another running back in the draft here. They still got Capri Bibbs there, by the way, who can catch passes out of the backfield. I am, I mean, Aaron Jones might have a good season. I'm not willing to take him at the 310 in drafts, for God's sake. No way. Absolutely. And I know somebody will jump up and they'll, oh, my God, it's the best yes, they will. back. And, yeah, you know, 
Okay, and then yeah, for and, my sleeper. And, oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say with Aaron Jones, he is the he is the Dave. He could be the ascendant for 2019, and and like a, will totally let people down. Like Aaron Jones well, might he's have. He's not going to be the ascendant based on what we're talking about. <laughs> no, I'm, well, I'm just so, saying like, he could be the guy that Royce Freeman. Like, yeah, <laughs> he could be the type of guy. He could wobble. Maybe have a team right. Yeah, the wrong yeah we got the wrong player exactly. I wanted he him had so the, bad um, at the main event. He and he was and he was climbing uh, totally that weekend. Everybody was all about Royce Freeman. Aaron Jones oh. could be. He could be Royce Freeman 2.0. He could be the type of guy that everybody is all falling all over themselves to overdraft and overdraft, and then boom, week three MCL sprain again, and he's out for a month and a half. You know, and it's just it, there's just too much. There's too much messing around with him. I'm not a fan. I'm totally with you. What about a sleeper, Billy? Uh, for my sleeper, I like Naheem Hines. Um, I, he, you know, he kind of disappeared in the playoffs, which was weird because I had him in one of our, you know, the playoff uh, FFPC leagues, and that didn't go well. But uh, during the <laughs> season, he had 63 catches. Um, Tariq Cohen, when he was a rookie, he only had 53 catches. But uh, he had to deal with John Fox, so that was limiting, obviously. But, uh, yep. you know, Hines, I, I only see him growing from those 63 catches. And let's face it, you know Marlon Mack's not going to play a full season, you know. He never does. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, that, that, that's a bonus. I mean, when he goes down, I mean, he had nine catches two times last year during that span when he was down. And uh, he's going in the 10th round. I'm looking right now. And, uh, yeah, it's definitely a guy I'll be targeting the eighth. Yeah, I, I'm totally with you. And Naheem Hines is actually going pretty late in FFPC drafts right now. 1108 is his current ADP for a dude who caught 63 passes last year. To, uh, got got in the end zone four times as well. Still got 85 attempts on the ground. And I, I don't feel like he played a ton. 5'8", 200, yeah, I'll, I'll take him in the 11, 11th round for sure, especially if Indianapolis doesn't add another running back until day three of the draft or, you know, they just sign an also ran in free agency. He's a guy I'm definitely on. And certainly, Billy, you are a guy that we are definitely on uh, for following what you're doing in drafts in 2019, very successful 2018. And uh, we'll be checking you out on Twitter, at Fantasy Inquirer. And we'll go to FantasyInquirer.com. Can you tell the listeners, for anybody who's not familiar with their website, um, what they can find there? And can you talk a little bit about you potentially starting your own podcast this spring? Absolutely, yeah. My website, you can find my rankings and projections. Um, I've got my quarterbacks and running backs up right now. I'm working on the wide receiver and tight ends. Uh, By middle next week, I'll probably have the rookie projections up. And uh, I'm going to start back to writing content here pretty soon. And uh, by middle of next month, probably after St. Patrick's Day, I want to get the Fantasy Inquirer podcast up. And I'm still looking for a co-host. I've um, been talking to a few people, but uh, I haven't decided if I want to do floating co-hosts or just have a solid one like uh, you, know, you guys got going here. Well, I'm not sure I'm going to go solid. I was trying vacation like 10 weeks a year. That, 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 that is true. That is true. Uh, well, listen, if, for any for anybody who uh, who wants to audition or anybody you want to, you know, bounce some ideas off of and as a potential co-host going forward, they can obviously uh, uh, hit you up on Twitter at Fantasy Inquire, and they can check out all your stuff at FantasyInquire.com. We'll obviously – uh, be uh, be waiting to see how that uh, thing uh, comes together in 2019. Certainly a very successful season last year, Billy, and we want to appreciate or we want to tell you how much we appreciate you coming on the show tonight. Best of luck to you in all your drafts in 2019. And are we going to see you in Vegas again at Planet Hollywood this September? Oh, you betcha! I will be there. I can't wait. Uh-huh. I'm already, you know, I I almost traded those five for five football guys just to get my main event team back. I mean, I'm just. He went over that still, so I'll be raring and ready well, hey, to go by the time September rolls around. You know, you had the option of some, some credits with your winnings there. You're, you could have five main events if you wanted, so I don't know how many you took, but you know, whatever you wanted. <laughs> right. Yeah. You have a part blanche on how many main events you exactly. had you have yep. For sure. Well, listen, Billy, we'll uh, look forward to seeing you. Me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll look forward to seeing you at uh, Planet Hollywood. Uh, this September. Uh, have a great summer. Enjoy drafting season, and we'll uh, we'll definitely be uh, keeping tabs on the website and uh, following you on Twitter, man. Thanks for coming on the show tonight. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Absolutely. Hey, thanks a lot, guys. Thanks Billy, a lot. Billy Metcalf, ladies and gentlemen. Follow him on Twitter at 
Uh, Fantasy Inquirer, check out his website, fantasyinquirer.com. A lot of good stuff there. And if you want to potentially be the co-host of the Fantasy Inquirer podcast, reach out to him on Twitter as well. David? Well, you know, it's, it's weird. I mean, you're such a professional, Balky, because, you know, you, you're so used to telling everyone you're rooting for them to win the whole thing. Yeah. And then after week 16, I don't, you have to say something else. You have to well, say different things when you sign off, when somebody you say goodbye to someone. Yeah. I keep waiting for you to say, you know, hey, Billy, thanks a lot. You know what? We're, we're rooting for you, buddy. We're, we hope you're going to take yeah. it down. Listen, and I'll be like, Balky, it's the off season. Well, I'm still rooting for him to take it down. <laughs> Now, just thinking, what, what do you think? 2022 will have main events going in week 15 of the previous season. So I'll, I'll be Possible. able to just do it all, all, all season long. Uh, well, you know, our competition by that time will be doing combined AAF and uh, NFL, you know, fantasy leagues. You know, they'll call it the, I don't know, the, the pea shooter or the double derringer or whatever right, it's going to be. All right, then. So you'll have two teams, one in the AAF and one in the NFL, and they'll all be combined into one mega draft. Uh, over over well, there'll be two drafts. It'll be over, you know, over three four months with a couple of waiver periods in there. We should totally have a league <laughs> called the Mega Draft. I mean, wouldn't that be an awesome league? I don't know. Oh, uh, like, you mean M A G A? No, not the Mega Draft. <laughs> oh, the Mega Draft. Oh, sorry. And um, I don't know what we do. The Mega like. Draft would be cool. We well, I don't know. What <laughs> People are saying it's the greatest draft uh, of all time. You, don't you Trump your Trump invitation? I did Trump. I did Trump on uh, the airways. I went, I wasn't planning on it on on the show with Leo and Balky today and. I, uh, Leo was like, uh, he's like, oh, do your Trump, do your Trump, and and I don't remember what I was talking about, but I did the Trump. Uh, it's not my Trump impersonation. For that show. It's my impersonation of Alec Baldwin's impersonation of Trump. Whatever. I, I can't do Donald Trump. All right. Uh, so good stuff there from Billy. Let's uh, get into the fantasy flash. I want to thank Football Guys, Roto World, and Rob for tonight's rundown. Now, according to Tom Pelissero on Twitter, Dave Le'Veon Bell's trainer called the reports that claimed Le'Veon Bell was 260 pounds laughable. His trainer was uh, adamant that Bell is in elite shape and uh, pointed out uh, that he is much fresher than any other free agent back after sitting out the 2018 season. Now, if you remember, Le'Veon Bell coming out of Michigan State had a bit of a weight problem and uh, redefined his body, got down to 225. He is uh, looking for a lot of moolah right now. It sounds like this weight thing is a non-story right now. I, I swear this was put out by some team that wants to sign him. I was going to say the exact same thing. I'm telling you, Le'Veon Bell, first of all, he's he wants big money. Since he wants big money, he's too cocky and confident to get out of shape. I honestly believe that about him. He looks like he looks like a person. He was partying in Miami quite a bit. Well, you know, so is Gronk, but Gronk doesn't drink. That's I a good mean, point. Bell may not either. He seems like the type that gets manicures and pedicures and gets his hair cut like every fourth or fifth day, like over grooms himself. So he, I just don't see him out drinking or, you know, Maybe, I mean, I know he smokes pot. He might smoke, yeah. Yeah, he probably smokes pot off. You know, he's probably a great, great whatever. Yeah. Year and nine months, whatever, not getting tested. Maybe he has some Doritos, but I guarantee he didn't get up to 260. He's fine. Uh, do you know who else I, I found out is uh, smoking weed now? Former Bucks head coach and coach oh, of the Don year. Don Nelson? Don Nelson, yeah. Yeah, I, I kind of saw that clip, but I couldn't hear him because, uh, yeah, so he was talking uh, about it. was great. He's like, he's like, yeah, I haven't been. It's all kind of new to me, so I'm kind of getting used to it right now. I guess, I didn't see the photo of it, but you I know, guess he kind of looks like a little bit like Willie Nelson right well, you now. You know, when Don Nelson, when he was the coach of the Bucks, I swear he had gray hair back then. That was like in the 80s. I'm like, what yeah. is this guy, like 104 right now? <laughs> he, you remember the fish ties? He I, know he, I know he was actually like young, but he just yeah. didn't look that young to me because I was a kid. So I felt like he was 50 or 50, 55. I'm like, we've got to be in his 80s. Right. He's probably, what, 70, 75? Ah, uh, I can look that up for you right now. Uh, uh, did I ever tell my Don Nelson story about my, I guess it would be my uncle-in-law? <laughs> no. On the show? I'll tell you right now. Please do. Uh, he was working at my 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 father-in-law's brother. Um, 78. There you go, 78. Was working at a shoe store in Milwaukee back in the day. And Don Nelson came in when he was coaching the Bucks, And this is when the Bucks were... Uh, they're, they're a good team. Good. They're scuff, team. scuffling a little bit. Yeah. And uh, my uncle-in-law recognized him right away and said, "Hey, coach, how's it going? What, uh, what can need I some, set? You need some shoes? What can I set? Yeah. He's like, what can I set you up with today? And Don Nelson goes, "How about a pair of six nine power forwards? <laughs> Did you really say yeah. that? Yeah. That's really funny. That's Don Nelson at his finest. That I swear actually, to God, I told that story on the air. Maybe I told it on a different show. Must have been a different show. But but it's funnier than anything we've done on the show. Oh, already. totally. Yeah. No question. Absolutely Terrible. no question. Uh, carry on Johnson. Let's talk about him, Dave. Uh, his ability to catch passes out of the backfield will be a, quote, bonus for the offense according to brand-new spanking offensive coordinator Daryl Bevel. 
We're going to run the football, and we're going to run it really well, Bevel said. Carry on, Johnson, your thoughts on him, Dave, because I can tell you right now, as far as FFPC drafts go, he is currently going at the 308 ahead of such luminaries as Leonard Fournette, Derrick Henry, and Aaron Jones. Yeah, I love Carry on Johnson, actually. I, I mean, it's funny, we, he was going right around that spot of Aaron Jones. I prefer Carry on Johnson. He's more of a pedigree back, you know, more of a run based offense. I know the Packers are going to score more touchdowns, but I, I just trust carry on Johnson more. He looked really, really good in the time I saw him playing. And Matt Patricia loves running the ball. I know. He yeah. loves it. And who did he sign on as his new offensive corner? Another dude who loves yeah, running the Wisconsin football. Wisconsin product. And, yeah. Well, he was a quarterback in Wisconsin, right? Right. So he knows how bad quarterback, I mean, how bad he was at quarterback. Right, yeah. He just handed it off. Who did he hand it off to? Was it Dane? Ron or? Dane. Uh, no, excuse me. That was not Ron Dane. That was Brent Moss and Moss. Terrell Fletcher. Yeah, I remember yeah. those guys. Yeah. Sure. So that, that was who Daryl Bev was handing off to. Uh, I'll just play a mini would you rather with myself here. I'd rather ha- uh, have Carry on Johnson over both Aaron Jones and Leonard Fournette and Sony Michelle. I'd rather have Damian Williams. And I think right now I'd rather have Derrick Henry over Carry on Johnson. Definitely rather have Dalvin Cook over him. Uh, so I, I think that. Uh, I'm very scared of Damian Williams, by the way. Ah, let's explore that a little bit. There's not much to explore. I mean, they could just draft someone else. We talked about this last week. All right, hold on. Not paid big money. Let me throw this at you. Not paid big money. This is something that we brought up on the show with Leo and Balky today. Leo, uh, we were talking about potential landing spots for Le'Veon Bell. What about him going and signing with the Kansas City Chiefs? You know, if they have the cap room, I don't see it as being that outrageous at all. And then they'd have the best tight end. They'd have, what, a top five receiver? And arguably the best fantasy running back then. And I mean Sammy Watt. And great, the best quarterback. Great, yeah, WRC. Well, you know, let's get keep this in pro two minutes. Oh, yeah, a lot of. Oh, I'm sorry. He was the number rate. one quarterback in fantasy last year. So that makes him the best quarterback. Oh yeah. The best quarterback last year was Tom Brady. He won the Super Bowl. Oh come on. <laughs> well, come on. He's the leader of the team. Listen, Brady's in, uh, is he going to want to play for for a, a prostitute solicitor? Maybe, maybe he's going to ask for a trade now after this whole nonsense. Yeah, you know, I've seen some pictures and some memes online, and you know, oddly enough, they had a picture of the prostitute. It looked a lot. Kind of like Brady in the woods. Ah, interesting. Have you seen that one? I haven't. You know, I, I haven't been following this. Pretty story. Funny. I haven't been following this story closely. If you have three jobs. It's a sad me. situation. I'm just hoping that this whole Bob Kraft story has a happy ending. <laughs> God, you know, that is so terrible. I had multiple. I, I, I had multiple people tell me you gotta close the show off today oh, with man, that line. Terrible. I said I'm not gonna bring that up on the air. Right, but so dirty. for I a podcast, a, I totally will. I think a table shower. Right. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, Seattle Seahawks quarterback Russell Wilson was actually rumored this past Wednesday as a possible option for the Giants due to his wife's preference to live in New York City. One Giants beat writer has broken down why the uh, Wilson to the Giants rumors are probably not going to happen, including Seattle asking for a ton in trade and the fact that uh, his franchise quarterback contract compared with the relatively low cost of a quarterback in a rookie contract on the first round might prove to be problematic. Now, well, that's a terribly long sentence. This is the final year of his contract, and you got to believe the Seahawks are going to try to get something done. He will be a $25 million cap hit this year, and his next contract may be paying him more than $30 million, but certainly something paying him approaching $30 million. Dave, there's not, not much to see here. I don't see there's any way that Seattle is going to move Russell Wilson anywhere. <laughs> I don't see it either. She's going to have to deal with it. She's going to have to live in lowly, lowly, terrible Seattle. Right. She'll, she'll have to find a way, have some coffee. And she looks at the buy tax, an tax rates in New York. I mean, it costs like you know, a few million dollars just to live there. Yeah. And the other thing, too, with, with this whole thing, I think that there will be a time when there is a forward-thinking GM. Of you get a, a quarterback that you like but you don't love, and you trade him when he's no longer going to be on his rookie contract. To, just to get another quarterback on the rookie contract to get that championship window, I don't think this is that time. I think it will happen. I'm not saying it's right. I think it will happen at some point. I would say that 32 out of 32 NFL teams are, do not want – they don't want to be in a situation of getting a rookie quarterback for the so-called championship window versus having a $30 million Russell Wilson. I know – I get it when teams luck into that. They luck into Carson Wentz. They luck into Russell Wilson on the rookie Jared Goff. Jared Goff on the rookie deal. They, they, they want the awesome. Josh Rosen. They want the awesome, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Or Josh Allen. I mean, you could, something to be said for Dan that. Darnold. He's got his, he's got his window. Lamar he's, Jackson. He's just missing 49 other good players. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> just just coming up just short yeah. uh, in that. 
Uh, speaking of golf, Ram, this is an interesting story. So Todd Gurley. This is not, you know what, I, to us this shouldn't be interesting because this is like assumed. We knew he was more hurt than they were letting on. This is easy, this is easy as Judy Cypher. Yeah, so, so head coach uh, Sean McVay uh, said that he could have been dealing with a sprained knee as opposed to just simple inflammation during the season. Now, C.J. Anderson was on Fox Sports 1 Undisputed, uh, that great show, on Tuesday. <laughs> Quote, the injury was a little bit more than what everybody in the building thought, including himself. He'd never really tell me. I would say sprained knee. Obviously, it's the same injury he's had before in his career. I had surgery on my meniscus, and once you have a knee, you always have a knee. So it aggravates, and if he was getting a lot of touches early in the year, obviously him being one of the best backs, that's probably the case. Dave, from a dynasty standpoint, I know from the dynasty offer that you said you sent me, you are not banking on this being a, a serious issue for Gurley going forward in 2019 or the remainder of his career, this knee issue. Oh, that's correct. Now, what do you bank it? Like, you talk about C.J. Anderson saying, like, once you have, a, a like, a knee injury like that, it, it, it's always going to be there, and it's just going to be an aggravation, and it can knock you out for a little bit. But that's obviously not concerning to you at all. Yeah, I, I just feel like, you know, with the, that, much, that much time to heal, I think he's, he's going to be fine. It's not, it was not an ACL. It didn't sound like there was anything really totally serious. All right, let's let's uh, let's move on here into uh, in, in the fantasy feedback portion of the show, and, and we're going to look at how the running backs finished this past season, Dave. Um, no surprise, uh, I guess, to you that the number one running back overall by fantasy points per game from weeks 1 to 16 was your boy. Christian McCaffrey, no matter where you took him in drafts, he was a value in 2018. Yeah, is that a question? That's a statement, right? No, I, just, I thought I'd give you the floor to spouse a little bit on your boy. He's great. He's a fantastic player. I know that uh, Cam was hurt you know, later in the season, but you know, McCaffrey, what did he average? 30 points, 30 points a game late in the season? Uh, I don't for, for the season, it was 25 and a half. I don't know. 30 points, like. I think it was like 11 to 16. He's fantastic. All right, that said, so he's your slam dunk 101. He's pretty darn close. I mean, I would, you know, I would consider him at the 101, yes. Let's say you have the 101 pick. Are you taking McCaffrey or you're taking Barkley? I don't know. I mean, I think I've said already that I'm going to take Barkley. Okay. But it's pretty it, – I. there's a chance I would take McCaffrey. I, 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 I'm not totally finalized on that yet. You would take him over Gurley, right? I would consider him over Gurley. I mean, again, like, you know, I'm not, if I'm drafting today. Yeah, say, yeah. Uh, Which a lot of FFPC people Yeah, I know. I guess I'll take, I would go Barkley, McCaffrey, Gurley right now. That's how I would probably rank them as well uh, if if I had my druthers. Uh, you look at the, and, and those are the top three last year, McCaffrey, Gurley, Barkley is how they finished. You look after that, Camara, Ezekiel Elliott, and then number six, this is a compelling guy. James Conner filled in for Le'Veon Bell. I was going to say the injured Le'Veon Bell, but he wasn't injured last year. He just didn't show up for work. James Conner, Dave, is currently going at the 111 in drafts, and you're talking about the number six overall running back last year. That seems like a pretty good bargain to get him at the tail end of the first round. Start off with him and maybe Tyree Kill or, or Zach Ertz or Julio Jones. That is a pretty good start to your draft. You know, I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to do that if I – Where's Jalen Samuels going? I've got, I've got to get Samuels like yeah. two rounds early. Uh, he is eleven. Going, yeah, eleven oh nine. Wow, right that's now. a great guy. Yeah. All right, so nine. You know, nine. If I had the, I would. Man, that'd be tough. If I had the one. What is one eleven? Yeah, that'd be perfect. I'd take him to nine eleven. Sure. Um, by the way, you know who's going uh, at, also at the eleven oh nine is his real life teammate James Washington. That's too low, right? Where? James Washington is the eleven oh nine. That's too low. <clears throat> I don't know. He wasn't all that great. I, I get the whole story that Brown's going to be gone and Juju's going to be there. But, I mean, I guess it is a little bit late. I, yeah. get, I, I think you're right. I think yeah. you're right. I think you got to take it. Uh, considering what Pittsburgh is not, unless Pittsburgh just totally face plants this coming year, which, you know, who knows? If Roethlisberger has a down year, if Juju Smith-Schuster can't deal with the double teams, I, I don't know. But, but there is something to be said for James Washington. This is a running back show. We'll get uh, on board with that. Dave, who was the number eight running back last year? Don't look at your sheet. Take, take <laughs> a guess. Number eight, uh, James White. It was James White. Have a sheet on that. Yeah, I thought I gave it. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was the reason I was. You know, it's funny because I was looking at trading James White today in the big F and League. Right. Because I have him, and I'm like, oh, selling high. Yeah, because I get. I was considering offering him for like making him for Henry, and I would pay up a little bit more. And I'm like, oh, what did White score? I'm like, 259 points. It was like, oh my god, yeah, like some insane, insane. score. And I'm, I'm like, you know what? I might have to keep him at age 27. 259.7 in weeks one through 16. 
Here's a compelling question I think I already know the answer to. Would you rather have 2018 number eight running back, James White, or 2018 number nine running back, David Johnson? Johnson. Yeah, okay. and I figured it would be a slam dunk. Yeah, total train wreck of a season. Couldn't be worse. And he's still ninth. And he's, and he's going ninth right now. He does have uh, Josh Rosen as his quarterback this coming year again, who did not show sign. Actually, showed signs of regression as the season went on. Yeah, he, a, he does not look that good yet. And a rookie head coach, not not concerning to you? Yeah, I don't think you, I don't think you can get worse. Rosen will get better. I, I actually I do, I do think he'll get better. Christian Kirk will be on his second year. Fitz is still hanging out. Yep. Uh, you know, Richie they, Jones, they just, they just signed, Jones was hurt. Is he back? I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know, but they just signed Charles Clay. Nice. Look out. Clay. Yeah. Charles Clay. Yep. Um, he's one of them, and he will hurt you. Uh, Charles Clay uh, is not who I want to talk about here. Uh, David Johnson or James Conner, who would you rather have this season? By the way, I'm, I should I'm taking David Johnson. Okay, David Johnson, I should tell you right now, as far as his ADP goes, Currently in FFPC drafts, people are drafting him at the 205. So you can have both. You can have Connor and Dave Johnson to start off your draft. Uh, Joe Mixon was a top 10 running back last year. Tariq Cohen, Dave, finished at number 12. And, uh, you know, we were talking to Billy Met- or talking to Billy Metcalf about Tariq Cohen. Uh, he could actually even be better in 2019. Yes, yeah, so where did he finish? Tariq Cohen was running back 12 last year. I think he'd be hard pressed to finish much better, but yeah. I think I think that I actually feel pretty safe with him in that kind of neighborhood, I guess. And he's going at what did I say? I think I, I say it on the on the show that he was going at yeah the four oh nine right now uh, in drafts, uh, so you can get him at the end of the fourth round. Um, yeah, he's in, I I don't know if I can pull the trigger there, but he's interesting. Philip Lindsay, Mister Out of Nowhere, finishes at running back thirteen. Now here's an interesting one, Dave. Don't look at your sheet. Every time you get it wrong, I'll tell you who would give you another hint. Running back 14. This guy was a borderline RB1 last year from a total point standpoint. Who was he? That's your first step. So what was it? So Running back 14. That's it? Who was he? Yep. <laughs> well, it's obviously somebody that... You just said Philip Lindsay. What were you talking about, Lindsay? He was 13. All right. This guy obviously is not a guy you would imagine would finish at 14. He was highly inconsistent throughout the season. Had a bunch of big weeks. <laughs> Had a bunch of really crappy weeks. Um, I don't know. I'm still kind of He off. was an AFC running back. <laughs> a younger guy. Played his college ball down He's south. Younger fella. Yeah, younger fella. Um, may or may not have played the AFC East. And not for the Bills. So Drake, that's who it Kenyon is. Kenyon Drake, yeah. Drake yeah. running back 14. Yeah, they barely, they, they barely give him the ball. He has eight touches. They scored 23 points and two touchdowns off those eight touches because the team is the worst. New run, new head coach there this year, David Brian Flores, and uh, he's a defensive guy. Maybe there's more of an emphasis on Kenyon Drake this year, and that's certainly a guy that we'll have to pay attention to. Yeah. Kenyon Drake going at the 604 in drafts right now. Seems late. Drake's interesting. I wonder, you know, I wonder if they're looking to upgrade from him. He was a second round pick. He was considered undersized coming out. A lot of top touts didn't like him. Well, there's a lot of people touting Kalen Balaj right now, too. I mean, I guess it's possible, but I mean, Kalen Balaj sucked in college. He wasn't even that good then. He wasn't very good in the preseason. He wasn't very good last year, and now everybody thinks he's going to be good. Yeah, I guess that's the gist of it. Yeah, it's almost like the leash video we watched earlier. You know, if you're not accurate in high school, you're not accurate as quarterback in college. Right. And then you're not accurate in the pros, and you're out, and you're out of the NFL. It's yeah. like, you know, that you can't teach someone to be a better, uh, more accurate quarterback. You can improve it a little bit, but you're not going to make them a pinpoint accurate guy like, like Tom Brady, the Super Bowl winner. Right, yeah, the ghost. Washington State uh, head coach Mike Leach is who Dave was referring to there. On the opposite end of the spectrum, running back 15 last year was actually Adrian Peterson, believe it or not. And now we get into the, kind of the, the, the shit of it, as it were. <laughs> I know you like Derrick Henry. He was running back 16 last year, obviously came on at the end of the season. He was followed by two guys that I like coming up for this season in Derrick Henry and or excuse me, in Nick Chubb and Chris Carson. Kevin Coleman, I don't know how he finished in the top 20. T.J. Yeldon, too. These guys are accumulators, apparently, to finish in the top 20. Yeah, you know, Coleman, I mean, he had so many bad weeks. And Freeman got hurt early, and Coleman still sucked. Yeah. Terrible. I don't, I don't, wherever he goes, I'm not the excited thing, about The him. thing is, when you're getting this tier, 
You're actually talking about guys who only average, what, like 10, 12 points, 12 points a game? Uh, Coleman was 12, 12, and Yeldon was 12, yeah. It really drops off, and you're talking about really not that great or not exciting production, um, but go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I don't even know if, if it's worth it to, to go on after this. I mean, I'll just name, name the guys in, in the 20s. What about Chris the Carson? Guy. I already said I like him for this season. Yes, you do. Okay. Yeah. You're not too worried about and that. He, and he averaged 14 points uh, a game. Yeah, Carson was very solid. I mean, yeah. he, was a, you know, he did not catch a lot of passes, but he almost was always good for a touchdown. I would feel like every week he'd score one. I would be concerned if I was a Rashad Penny dynasty owner. I think so, too, because Carson's just a really damn good NFL player. Yeah. He, he really has very few flaws. And I question how good of an NFL player Rashad Penny is. I, I, I agree with you. Where did he go to college? San Diego State? Is that right? Yeah. Penny? He, yeah, he okay. did. Okay, all right. Um, other guys who finished not exactly the uh, FDC. No, not exactly that. Uh, other guys who finished in the top twenty last year: Aaron Jones, Matt Breida, Marlon Mack, of course, the venerable Lamar Miller, Austin Eckler making his way in there, Deion Lewis, Chalen Richard. I mean, what the hell? Uh, Dalvin Cook uh, finished thirtieth overall, but he did average fourteen point six a game. Carry on Johnson. Carry on Johnson, thirty-two. He averaged fourteen point one four a game. In um, limited usage, too. Even. Very limited, yeah. Uh, I don't think there's there's too much. I mean, Sony Michelle, 11.3 last year. Uh, Leonard Fournette, 15, 15 points a game. I mean... I think Fournette's getting pretty cheap. I'll tell you right now, and, and we'll kind of wrap I'm up the con- like for Dynasty. Yeah, we'll, we'll wrap up the conversation right now with, with oh, the, the running back and the show, yeah. Okay. Leonard Fournette going at the 308 right now. Uh, I feel like he might be cheap for Dynasty. Though. Okay, okay for Dynasty. Um, for redraft, Derrick Henry's going right behind him. You'd rather have Henry? I would, but I mean, Fournette in that area is fine. I mean, it's nice. I have. I mean, the team again. How much worse offensively could they really get? I mean, it might not get great though. Right. I have Leonard Fournette in a Dynasty league that you happen to be in with me, and I said I was. I've been looking to move him since last season. I'm trying. I'm trying to remember what. What is that? Gridiron Legends. I think that's Gridiron Legends. If I, I just made a trade that week. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Hold on. So you had that was the 101 pick. Yeah, don't worry. I wouldn't give you the 101. No, pick. but I mean, you could have used that as part of a a, a deal. I could have moved some other pieces. Well, yeah. Well, not anymore. We're obviously. on part of your, uh, you're on doing your show. So if you were, yeah. So if you um, wanted to acquire Leonard Fournette and you had the 106, would you deal with 106 for Fournette? I think I would actually in this draft. Yeah, okay. I think so. I mean, All right. You know, if you need a running back. Would you deal the 104? What is he? So he's, he's 24. Yeah, you know, I, I I think I would. I just... I mean, if this is so early right now, I mean, what, yeah. what's the 104 going to be? Harmon or Perry or Carey or Jerry or Larry? Whatever the hell these guys' the names yeah. are. We barely know what their names are. I know there's, there's a lot of oversized... This, this is a good year for big wide ups. A lot of 6'3", 2.5 guys. But I mean, half half of them, Jake Rickard will tell you, half of them are going to suck. You know, which half it is, we don't know. Yeah. So you're at, so do you want 100% of Leonard Fournette, or do you want a half shot at a stud receiver? Yeah. So I don't know. I'd rather take 100% of Leonard Fournette, which is what you're getting at the 104. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, Jacksonville offense still scares me. Jacksonville organization still scares me. Um, and I, I'm sure I will have some uh, some trade talks with. Leonard Fournette going forward here before the season starts. That's going to do it for our show. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank uh, Billy Metcalf. Follow him on Twitter at Fantasy Inquirer. Check out his website, FantasyInquirer.com. Give him some love. Hey, you want to be his podcast co-host? I'm sure he'd love to, uh, to to speak with you about that, so reach out to him on Twitter there. It's want to, not all cracker. I want to thank Dave Grzak, <laughs> the FFPC. Yes, it is. Rob, Bryce, and, of course, each and every one of you uh, for listening to our uh, little dog and pony show tonight. Really appreciate it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, a special happy birthday to former guest of this show and former guest of the uh, Road of His High Stakes Lowdown, Mike Foresta. Is we're doing birthdays now? Oh, we're doing birthdays, yeah. This is like the WBAY News in the Morning. Yeah, kind of, yeah. I'm, and I'm hey, Willard, I'm hey, Willard Scott. Dylan, he's age seven. Yeah, all right. He just got out of second grade. Yeah, but we're not going that far. <laughs> but, uh, check, out the, animals. check out the Dynasty Orphans, the best of all leagues at myffpc.com. A lot of great stuff out there. Sign up for that 500K main event. Your weekend starts now. This has been another episode of the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour presented by MyFFPC.com that was broadcast live and heard around the world. Eric and Dave will be back next week with more analysis, interviews, and advice from a guest much smarter than they are. 
Thanks for listening, and we'll talk with you again next week. We're on a famous floor, even more so if we on tour. Me and E explore the country, wondering about the evening before. Trying to explain where the time went. Well, other rappers find a studio to grind in. How about that, Dave? A tidy 69-minute show tonight. you got to love that. Yeah, you were on point, sort of. And Yeah, sort of. Well, sort of for me. Sort of being on point for me is totally on point for me. Um, also, good news, and I forgot to tell you this, uh, we did get blocked by YouTube after the new theme music last week, so I was really really excited about that. You know, like his wax is cool. Yeah. KRS-One might be dead for all we know. Well, no, I don't think KRS-One would have cared. DJ Rectangle is, is Oh, guy. Rectangle, he's cool. Yep. He's cool a lot. All right, so in the future, we're only going to look at Wax and DJ Rectangle when we have to... It's not a bad policy, to be honest with you. It's a pretty good one. We're installing it right now. (laughs) I have spoken. Thank you for... Dispensary Girl is the next song from Wax. Okay. (laughs) This this stuff is taking care of itself. Thanks for listening, everybody. Talk to you next week. (laughs) This brown bag lunch... This staycation, this do-it-yourself oil change, this second shift at work. At American Family Insurance, we understand what it takes to make your first home a reality. It's the same as it takes to protect it for home, auto, life, and business. Visit AmFam.com to learn more. Insure carefully. Dream fearlessly. American Family Insurance. American Family Mutual Insurance Company, SI, and its operating company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin. Hi, it's Jamie, Progressive's Employee of the Month, two months in a row. Leave a message at the... Hi, Jamie. It's me, Jamie. I just had a new idea for our song about the Name Your Price tool. So when it's like, tell us what you want to pay, hey, 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 and the trombone goes, blah, 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 and you say, we'll help you find coverage options to fit your budget. Then we just all do finger snaps while a choir goes, savings coming at ya, savings coming at ya. Yes? No? Maybe? Anyway, see your practice tonight. I got new lyrics for the rap break. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law.